we are. Well, let's have our next contestant. May we please? Right. Hi, Steve. Uh, this is Mr. Gould. Steve Dunn. Mr. Gould, your first name, sir? John. John Gould. Where are you from, John? From Studio City, California. Studio City, California. <laughs> My goodness. Are uh, you married, John? Yes, I am. Have any children? Yes, I do. How many children do you have? Well, I've got nine. Love your wife? You've got Robert what? <laughs> nine? You're kidding, really? No, really. I'll pay you $500 right now if you can name all nine that fast. <laughs> You mean it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. But uh, we want to ask you, uh, are you available right now? We, as a matter of fact, I want the audience out here to know that before our show, we asked for people in our studio audience who would be available for an extended length of time, and Mr. Goose said that he would be available. Before we get to that, I want to ask you the question. You know how we play T or C, don't you? We ask sure a little question. I have a little question for you here I'd like to ask. <laughs> now, listen carefully, please, <clears throat> Mr. Goose. Why is an egg like a girdle? <laughs> That's enough! <laughs> Don't overdo it. He waits for that minute every week. Why is an egg like a girdle? You never know what's inside until it's open, and then it's all over the place. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Let's save that one. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Goes, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Are you considered a dead game sport? Well, I'll try to be. All right. Are you willing to do absolutely anything within reason, of course? Within reason, yeah. Uh, we learned, too, you were an insurance man. Is that right? That's right. Is your insurance paid up? It should be. Are you sound of mind, body, and spirit? I think huh? so. Well, let me tell you, buddy, you're just the man we want. Because when you appear on our show next week, we want you to be prepared to leave town. You still great, willing to go great. through with this? Huh? That's I all we're going to tell you right at this point, except that you'd better get a passport and your inoculation because you're going on a trip out of the country. Huh? You willing, still willing to go with it? We're not kidding, you know. We really mean it. The boss say it's okay, or are you in business for yourself? I'm in business for myself. Oh, that's fine. No wonder he hasn't extended time. All right, sir, John, goodbye. We'll see you next week. Fine. Sit down now. Here we are. That's what you thought, wasn't it? Huh? Is, is he really going to be in the first Americans public? He <laughs> is he gone? Huh? Is he gone? Okay. Now look, when you hear the gag that we've cooked up to pull on poor Mr. Goof, you see, when what he doesn't know is that when he returns to our show next week, we're going to tell him that for his consequence, he's going to take a trip, all right, but he's going to be taking a trip around the world, all within a period of one week. Now, look, any of you folks who know Mr. Goose, please try to keep our little secret. If you know him and you see him on the street in the next few days, just walk up to him and say, oh, boy, what's going to happen to you? But don't tell him anything else, will you? And now listen, because within a period of seven days, Mr. Goose is going to find out there's a new way around the world via Transworld and Northwest Orient Airlines, who will inaugurate, by the way, this new service on January 1st. Now, among other places, I'd like to, first of all, tell you we're going to start here at Los Angeles, right here. We're going to fly up to New York. London, Paris, Rome, Athens, Bombay, Bangkok, Singapore, Hong Kong, Manila, Tokyo, Honolulu. Oh, I skipped Okinawa. And he's going up to Anchorage, Alaska, and subsequently back here to Los Angeles. Now, of course, he's going north, west, and TWA, and he'll be flying the all-radar route all the way. <laughs> boy, oh, boy, I can hardly wait to see the look on Mr. Goose's face next week when we tell him what his consequence is. And uh, that's a look you won't want to miss either, because no one has ever gone around the world the way Mr. Goof is going to go around the world. So be sure to be watching our show next week, won't you? Thank you. As I'm sure you'll remember, on last week's show, we told a contestant by the name of Mr. John Goof that for his consequence, all he had to do was to go home, pack his bag, and prepare to leave the country. Now, what we didn't tell him, however, was that he would soon be leaving on a trip that would eventually take him around the world. Now, as far as we know, he still doesn't know it. But believe me, he soon will, because right now, we're about to bring him out on stage. Okay, you fellas, you if you will, Mr. Goose. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, and he has no twin. And he has no twin. <laughs> Thank you very much. How do you do, Mr. Goose? Nice to see you again, sir. Nice to see you. I see you're all packed, ready to go, huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. Have you any idea where you're going to go, Mr. Goose? No, I don't. Have you I'm any idea? Just a trip. I beg your pardon? Just a trip. Just a trip. You have no idea how long you're going to be gone? Did you get your shots and passport? I okay. sure did. I'm loaded with shots. You are? <laughs> Every place? Every place. <laughs> <laughs> do they hurt much? Yes, they do. They do, huh? Is your insurance paid up, Mr. Goo? I have taken care of that. Too. As I understand, you're an insurance man, so I would imagine that would be taken care of. Mr. Goo, prepare yourself for a shock. 
if you will, please. Look at me in just exactly one hour. You are going to leave on a trip that will eventually take you all the way around the world. <laughs> no kidding. That's, that's a fact. That's a fact. Now, are you still willing to go along with this? Sounds wonderful. <laughs> I don't have to walk. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Just so I don't have to walk. No, you're not going to walk. Listen very carefully now, because eventually, eventually, Mr. Gould, you are going to find out there's a new way around the world via Transworld and Northwest Orient Airlines, who inaugurated this service, incidentally, on January 1st. Now, last week we showed you where you were going. I'd like again to show the folks you're going to leave here from Los Angeles, go to New York, to London, Paris, Rome, Athens, down here to Bombay, Bangkok, Singapore, Hong Kong, Manila, Tokyo, Okinawa, Anchorage, Alaska, and subsequently back here again to Los Angeles. Okay? Of course, going northwest in TWA, uh, Mr. Guth, you're going to be flying all radar routes all the way. Now, Mr. Guth, a moment ago I said you would be eventually uh, around the world. I say eventually because next week we're going to tune you in from wherever you are. And if you can tell us your exact location at that time, we're going to give you a prize you will never forget. <laughs> is that okay with you? Wonderful. Of course, you're probably standing there thinking to yourself, well, boy, this is going to be real simple. All I have to do is look around, and then I'm going to know where I am. Isn't that right? That's right. Well, I'm afraid, Mr. Guth, it isn't going to be quite that easy, because you see, for your entire trip around the world, you are going to be blindfolded. <laughs> Here comes the blindfold right now. <laughs> Now, Mr. <laughs> you still willing to go along with this? You can't see a thing from there, huh? I can't well, that's the way. Now, I that's know. the way you're going to be, and we'd like very much to introduce you to the companion you're going to have, <laughs> who's going to be around, going around the world with you. Here he is now, Mr. Byron Schmidt, coming on stage right now. I'd like to have you shake hands with him, Mr. Goop. There he is right there. Sure. Byron Schmidt. Uh, He's a nice-looking man, wouldn't you say, Mr. Goose? Uh, he sounds good. <laughs> well, let me tell you, he is a nice-looking man. He has red hair and everything else, and uh, you two boys are going to be seeing a lot of each other. I mean, uh, you're going to be with each other a great deal. Let's put it that way. Now, remember, we're sending you off now. We're going to have remote equipment set up to tune you in next week from wherever you happen to be. If you can tell us where you are, we have a wonderful gift for you, okay? Wonderful. All right, if you will, please, take them right off, Mr. Schmidt. There we go. Well, wait a minute. You better take your bag with you. Here you are, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good luck. Get that blindfold on now. Is he gone? Is he gone? Okay. Okay. Man, oh man, well, you see where poor Mr. Goose ends up next week. Whatever you do, don't miss it. Don't miss it.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm sure you'll remember, on last week's show, we told a contestant, whose name is Mr. John Goose, that for his consequence, we wanted him to take a trip around the world, blindfolded. We then told him that since this trip would take a little longer than a single week, we'd tune him in from wherever he was sometime during tonight's show. Actually, we told Mr. Guth a little white lie because since last week, Mr. Guth has found out, even with his blindfold on, that there's a new way around the world via Transworld and Northwest Orient Airlines, who inaugurated this service, by the way, on January 1st. Of course, going Northwest and TWA, he flew the radar route all the way. It's real nice. and so. Now the time has come to find out where Mr. Guth is. Could it be Bombay, Tokyo, Singapore? What do you think, huh? Well, let's find out. Come in, Mr. Guth, wherever you are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in case you haven't already guessed, after traveling more than 25,000 miles, Mr. Guth is about to re-enter his very own front yard. Here he comes now. This is the fact, I've got 25,000 miles. He's coming in the yard right now. And in just a moment, you'll be getting out of the car. Oh, what a trip this is. And as you'll notice in just a moment, you'll see that he is wearing his blindfold and also a pair of heavy earphones. Now, these earphones he's had on ever since he left Tokyo two days ago. He can therefore neither see nor hear. He can only feel and smell. Okay, fellas, fellas out there, turn on the wind machine and get that ocean spray to blowing, would you? Ocean spray to blowing. <laughs> That's it, fine. Oh, I can smell that salt air. Look at that. <laughs> Atomizers, no less. Incidentally, that man with uh, uh, Mr. Guth is Mr. Byron Schmidt. He's escorting him and has escorted him over to the deck chair that awaits him. Mr. Schmidt has been Mr. Guth's companion, by the way, ever since he left Los Angeles a week ago. And now, and now before Mr. Schmidt removes Mr. Guth's earphones and we ask him to make the all-important guess as to where he thinks he is, let's have our sound effects man turn on the recording of the pounding surf and ask our steel guitar player, Mr. Alvino Ray, to begin playing some native music. Can you do that? Let's hear it. There's the surf. Is Alvino playing? He's playing. Okay. Now, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Schmidt, can you yeah. hear me, sir? You yeah, can hear I me. Can. Will you please take off Mr. Goat's earphones, but be yeah. sure to leave the blindfold on. Right. Take off his earphones. Fine. Mr. Goat! Yes, sir. Mr. Goat, this is Steve Dunn, way back in Hollywood, California, USA. Can you hear me? I sure can, Steve. Mike coming into you okay? Coming in good. How do you feel, Mr. Goat? A little sleepy, but pretty good. A little sleepy? Yeah. Did you have a good time? Wonderful. Have you seen anything of interest? <laughs> Pardon me? Have you seen anything of interest? I haven't seen a thing for about a week now. <laughs> well, Mr. Gould, the whole country is waiting right now to find out where you think you are. So, Mr. Gould, yes. from the way you feel, smell, and hear, tell me, where do you think you are? Well, let's be in truth and consequence. I think I'm in Honolulu. You think you're in Honolulu? Did I hear you right? That's right. Well, Mr. Gould, take off your blindfold. Let's see if your answer is correct. Oh. <laughs> uh, you look a little surprised, Mr. Gould. But considering where you've been and what you've done, I don't blame you. How's it? <laughs> there they are. Wonderful. Look, Mrs. Gould, where are you? There you are. How, how, does, it, how does your husband look to you, Mrs. Gould? A little tired, but wonderful. Uh, how about you kids? Dad look uh, different to you, kids? Oh. Are you glad to see him? Yeah. Well, I'll bet you are, and I bet he's glad to be home, too. Well, Mr. Gould, even though you didn't see any of the seven wonders of the world, believe me, you did something no one else has ever done. You flew around the world blindfolded. <laughs> In fact, one of our assistants is right now handing you some souvenirs you can pass around to your friends. Look at that, oh. look at that headline. Gould circles the globe blindfolded. <laughs> well, Mr. Gould, now maybe you'll believe anything can happen on Truth the Consequences, and usually does. And even though you didn't correctly guess where you were, sir, you're still going to get that wonderful prize that we promised you. Listen now, a two-week, all-expense paid vacation for you and your wife to either Honolulu, Hawaii, the Northwest Airlines, or to Paris, France, via TWA Jetstream. <laughs> How does that, uh, this time you, uh, 
You can go without the blindfold, Mr. Gould. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll ask I'll... you to go in short. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, whatever you decide to go, we're going to see to it that your regular babysitter stays with the children. So don't you worry anything about that at all. Anything uh, you'd like to say, sir, in closing? Oh, just that it sounds wonderful. I want to wait uh, a couple of weeks to get rested up, though, before I Good boy. Go. Well, you get some sleep. In the meantime, thank you, sir, for being such a wonderful contestant. Goodbye to you and your wonderful family, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you.